Yeah, can you actually speak to the print of debugging? Like you, you walk into a system, and there's a lot of systems in the world like this. Like uh, Twitter was like this when then you when uh, mm -hmm. when Elon acquired Twitter and then rolls in and there's this old janky code base that's just like a giant mess and you have to basically do print of debugging. Like what's the process of going into a code base and figuring out like, what the fuck, well, how does this work? What are the flaws? What are the assumptions? You have to like reverse engineer what all these other engineers did in the past and the mess across, you know, the space of months and years. And you have to figure out how all that works in order to make improvements. The thing, the reason why I've always just been good at printf debugging because one of my first kind of side quest jobs that I got was writing robots for the government when I was still at school. Mm -hmm. And so I'd kind of do this contractually for so many hours, um, so many hours a week. And my boss, Hunter Lloyd, great professor, by the way, he just said, hey, here's your computer. Here's the robot. Here's how you plug it in. Here's how you run the code. Can you write the flash driver, the ethernet driver? Can you write the planetary pancake motor? Here's some manuals. Um, I'm missing some, just figure it out, I'll be back. So that was government work for me. So I was like, okay, I'll figure all these things out. And I figured them all out. And the only way to really get anything out of the machine uh, was to print. And so it's like, I had to become really good at printing my way through problems. And so that kind of became this like skill, I guess I adopted is that I can just kind of print after bug my way through a lot of these problems. Obviously, I'm not a game developer, probably a different world, probably should use. I think John Carmack was on here and talked how great the debugger is. Different world. Because when I was at Netflix, there's machines that exist somewhere where on AWS, I'm not logged into them. I don't even know how to log into them. I'm not even sure if I have credentials to log into them. They run once somewhere and I have to figure out what happened and why it's happening. So it's like, I'm going to become, this is like, this is what I've trained for. Yeah. I'm a print after bugging champion. So it's just like, I could just run through these things really quickly and figure out why they're happening the way they're happening. You're a special human. I think that's an incredible skill set to have, to be able to drop in into any code base, to drop into any situation and do print out debugging, meaning like, you know, you're in a dark room and you're feeling around that room to try to figure out what the room is. Well, I had the code, so it's like I can kind of blueprint what's happening. Like, I don't understand the services or anything that's happening, but like, you can start guessing pretty quick as to what's going wrong. Right, but then the, the print side of that helps you... Uh, confirm your intuitions, test yeah. your intuitions and build up more and more information. And then you start to accumulate like this bigger picture from that, what the edge cases are that uh, that break the system and not. I mean, I, I think that just that kind of space, like that kind of situation is uh, intimidating for a lot of engineers. Like they break down at that point. I think this really is a powerful thing to be able to come into a code base. That's just a, generally a skill set of like, uh, very few of us start from scratch. Yeah. And actually, this is the fundamental problem of web development and in general, where they're like, uh, I don't know what's going on. I'm going to write my own thing from scratch, right? As opposed to like actually doing print of debugging on the, on the space of languages, on the space of problems, because there's a lot of wisdom and solved problems already in this code base. It's a much more important skill set to understand, to learn from the mistakes and the wisdom of the past of the ancestors that came before mm -hmm. and, and build on them as opposed to throw it all out and start from scratch. This is something obviously you see a lot with a JavaScript framework that comes out and you want every single day. So I have a very great story about that, that. This is what like I think has shaped me the most about my perspective of other devs. There's this dev and he always just wrote things in just what I thought was such a bizarre and weird way. And it was, this had to do with Falcor, so our data fetching um, library for Netflix. Mm -hmm. This r would run on mobile, so I had to write in Objective-C, it had to run on television and it had to also run on web. So it ran on everything. And it, me and one other person were responsible for this thing working. And the request side where we'd had to dedupe the information that we already have, the requests that were pending, and the new data. So I had to figure all that out based on what someone's requesting and then just only optimal, optimally request the stuff that we don't have. He wrote it in such a goofy way. And I'm thinking, man, this guy is just, what a goofball. So I delete it all. And I start writing and I'm like, look at how much nicer this is. It's looking so good. I'm like, ooh, there's that one edge case. Uh, okay, I can see why he wrote it this one way. That's not a big deal though. The rest of my code is really great. By the end of it, I'm like, I literally almost line for line just reproduced what he already wrote. Mm -hmm. It's like slightly different towards my style, but I just wrote the same code. 
And I'm like, I'm an idiot. <laughs> I am the idiot in this situation because it was already a solved problem. I just didn't take the time to learn what he did. Instead, I relearned what he did by rewriting the entire thing. I think that's a skill set that is extremely important for people to learn. I see that in myself. That's a constant struggle for myself. I When uh, facing a code base, for example, but this applies generally in life, where somebody did a lot of work to do a thing, you should invest a huge amount of time and get really good at figuring out what they did, why they did it, do a lot of print of debugging to understand what they did. It's a much more efficient way to understand a problem deeply than to start from scratch, even though there's a constant temptation to start from scratch because starting from scratch is fun. You do get the puzzle solving, all that kind of stuff. It's just not going to be the right thing to do. Uh, yeah. Usually pain is the right thing to do. And it is for most people painful to understand other people's code bases. I highly recommend starting from scratch if you want to understand a concept. You don't know how an HTTP server works? Create a TCP socket, learn how to parse HTTP. It'll become very easy and you'll go, this is the reason why whenever I get a request, I have to await the text. I now understand why the text is, for whatever reason, not there. I get it. I now understand it. And so you kind of gain these new perspectives just by simply parsing something out.